Hello, language and life-loving friends, and welcome to Creative Teaching and Learning Ideas with Patrick and Gable. I'm Patrick, and this fine furry gentleman is Master Gable. And today, we have an amazing concept for you, which I call purge emerge words, okay? Uh, this is a term that I've just recently coined, and it's the focus of today's talk. An awareness of these words is very helpful when you're teaching or learning vocabulary due to the associations that they elicit and the connections uh, that they highlight, okay? It's also beneficial uh, to be aware of these words if you want to use them as a brain booster or a brain teaser or a brain strengthening exercise. Uh, we'll see also that these purge emerge words can be used if you teach another language or other languages as well. So please uh, watch until the end of the video because I'm going to give you three examples using three totally different languages, okay? But first, as always, uh, let's go outside and do a quick little mind-body-breath exercise to get a set for the rest of the video. Okay, so before we start, let's do a quick little mind-body-breath exercise. And Mr. Bubbles here is going to help out too. Of course, he's going to do it on the ground. Okay, okay, so this is very simple. Just um, stretch your arms out like this, and then as you bring them together, inhale, and then move them up over your head, and then release. And then bring them together, inhale, over your head, and release. And the last one, bring them together, over your head, and release. Okay, let's begin. Let's begin. The three questions that I'm going to focus on today are, one, what are purge emerge words? And I'm going to give you a whole list of those. And then two, uh, how can an awareness of these purge emerge words help us teach and learn vocabulary? Okay. And then three, how can these kinds of words make us better language learners or just better learners in general? So you're probably asking, what is a purge emerge word? right? <laughs> so I'm going to give you a definition. This is a definition I've created. Um, yeah, a purge emerge word is a word that immediately reveals another word uh, when you take away the first letter or character of that word, okay? Hence, purge emerge. So here is an example. Here, okay? H-E-A-R, right? Um, here is a purge emerge word because when you purge the H, the first letter of the word, ear emerges, okay? So take away the H from here and you get ear. Right? As I just mentioned, um, it's interesting, what's interesting about these words is the associations they elicit and the connections they highlight. Um, that is, you actually hear with your ear. Um, these words have a very intimate relationship. Now the history of this word, um, or th this concept, um, I noticed these kinds of links and connections regarding words within words one afternoon. Um, and as a game, I asked our daughter, can you think of different purge emerge words? And within five minutes, we came up with like 30 different examples. So I thought, hmm, we're onto something here. And so I called friends near and far and emailed them. Um, the, the great Mike Berman from Maryland, the, the, he's the grammar guru and the Wisconsin TESOL president, Kerry Johnson, and they said, well, why not just call these terms, the Patrick term, purge emerge? So there you have it. And as I mentioned before, the focus today is English, um, but you can use this concept with other languages. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, at the end, I'm gonna give you an example of uh, some purge emerge words in Spanish, Turkish, and even Japanese, okay? So let's start with some English examples. <laughs> I gave you before, uh, number one, here goes to ear. So you, you purge the H in here, you get an ear. An example sentence, you hear with your ear, okay? Um, another one, this is kind of a neat one, uh, touch and ouch, okay? Um, you purge the T and touch and you're left with ouch. Um, so if you touch a thorn, you might say ouch. So it's a, it's a neat little connection there between the actual feeling of something and the possible result. Okay. Um, another neat one is broom going to room. So if you purge the B in broom, you're left with room. 
okay? Um, you use a broom to sweep a room. So again, there's a neat connection there. Uh, gold and old. You purge the G in gold and you're left with old, okay? I did a little research for you and found out that gold is around three billion years old. So yes, gold is actually old, okay? Another neat one is with animals. So goat and oat, okay? Purge the G in goat and you're left with an oat, okay? And goats love to eat oats. And for us teachers out there, a neat one is teach and each, okay? Purge the T and H and you're left with each. So you teach each student. Feel and eel. So here again is kind of a, a visceral example. Um, you take the F off of feel and you're left with the slithering creature eel, okay? Uh, the feel of an eel can make you squeal, okay? So in teaching these, you can find connections even with visceral things like that. Um, flight goes to light. Um, purge the F in flight and you're left with light, okay? Uh, the bird is in flight because she is so light, okay? And then here's a kind of a grammar-based one, uh, sat and at, something very simple. Uh, purge the S in sat and you're left with at. Takako sat at the table. And that's kind of a neat one because um, in references to what prepositions you're going to use for a word like sat, you sit at the table is the preposition that you usually use with that. And of course, we could never leave out Mr. Gable here. So Gable goes to Abel. Purge the G in Gable and you're left with Abel. And as we know, Gable is able to do many things. Right, buddy? So do you see how fantastic these words are? Um, so in teaching new words, uh, you can use this concept to help the students find connections between other words, okay? Uh, now, what about other languages? Uh, let's have a look-see. So let's take a look at Spanish. Uh, hola and hola, okay? Um, purge the H in hola and you get hola without the H, okay? Hola, of course, those of you who have studied Spanish know that it means hello. Um, and hola without the H means wave on the water, okay? So you can say hola to the hola on the sea, okay? Um, now that would have been perfect, of course, if um, the other ola was actually the gesture wave, but it ha just happens to be a wave on the water. But still, there's kind of a neat connection there. Another example in Spanish could be toro and oro, okay? Um, purge the T in toro, and you get oro, okay? Uh, toro means bull, and oro means gold. Um, the toro carries the oro, okay? Now, of course, if you're teaching Spanish, you're going to say el toro está llevando el oro, but you can kind of get the idea either way that there's that neat connection between toro and oro, okay? Now let's take a look at a totally different language, syntactic-wise, Turkish. Here, you can take a word like sev um, and ev, okay? So if you purge the s in sev, you're left with ev. The neat thing there is that sev is the command to love, okay? And ev means home, okay? So love your home, right? There's a neat connection there. And here's kind of a funny one, otuz and tuz, okay? Purge the o in otuz and you get Tuz, which is salt, okay? Uh, otuz means 30, and, and tuz is salt, okay? So there are 30 grains of salt. You can find a connection there somehow. Um, and then Japanese, which is also completely different, but you can still do this because they, they use um, so many different kinds of characters in their language with, with special meanings, okay? So for example, I have here for you uh, tenki and ki, okay? Purge the ten in tenki, and you get ki, okay? Uh, tenki means weather, okay? And ki means air, right? So the weather is always influenced by the air or the air pressure, okay? So again, there's a neat connection there. Gakushu goes to shu, okay? So purge the gaku and gakushu, and you're left with shu, okay? Um, gakushu means study, and shu means learn, okay? So when you study something, you learn it, okay? So again, a really neat connection. So there you have it, pretty neat, right? Earlier we asked, um, how can an awareness of these purge and merge words help us teach and learn vocabulary? I think by paying attention and being mindful of these kinds of words, you, we can help our students elicit these associations and draw connections within these purge and merge words. And the neuroscientists and cognitive psychologists have told us that if we can find associations and patterns and connections and relationships, 
with words and, and their immediate environment. It's just going to help us learn those uh, to a really strong degree and, and keep them in a long-term memory. Okay? We also asked at the beginning uh, how these kinds of words can make us better language learners or learners in general. And I think it's pretty clear um, the more we're aware of these kinds of words, the more fun we're going to have um, in teaching and learning um, vocabulary. Um, the more connections we can make, the more uh, verbs, nouns, adjectives, whatever uh, we can acquire. So we can just acquire language. Um, you can probably even use this with other ideas as well. Okay? We hope this has been helpful for you. Um, so please share these ideas with your colleagues, fellow teachers, students, family, friends, anybody who is in need of a neat way to teach or learn vocabulary. Also, please leave a purge or merge word um, in the comment section if you can think of one in another language or one in English, okay? If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so because it's a great way to support our channel. And most of all, have a wonderful day and please enjoy your purge or merge words.